वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल सो आई विल डिमॉन्स्ट्रेट यू इन दिस स्पेसिमैन ओके अबाउट द फोर्थ वेंट्रिकल नाउ लेट अस सी अबाउट दिस मिड सेजाइटल सेक्शन दिस इज द राइट सेरिब्रल हेमिसफियर इन मिड सेजाइटल सेक्शन दिस इज द मीडियल सरफेस ऑफ द सेरिब्रम ओके and then this is the carpus callosum septum pellucidum this is the fornix anterior commissure this is the third ventricle that is the lateral wall of the third ventricle formed by the thalamus and that of the hypothalamus this is the hyp uh, hypothalamic sulcus okay or the subthalamic sulcus and you see that it starts from the interventricular foramina which connects the lateral ventricle with that of the third ventricle and third ventricle is a midline structure if you trace the third ventricle then it becomes continuous with this midbrain where there is a presence of a canal what is called as the cerebral aqueduct okay the csf which is produced in lateral ventricle it comes in the third ventricle then from third ventricle through this cerebral aqueduct of the midbrain it comes in the fourth ventricle so this is the fourth ventricle so this is the floor of the fourth ventricle and this is the roof of the fourth ventricle so this is space which is located in front of the cerebellum in the mid sagittal section is the fourth ventricle which is lying behind the pons and the upper part of the medulla okay now this fourth ventricle is found in the hind brain because what is hind brain the part of the pons the medulla and the cerebellum this three part that is pons medulla and cerebellum they are collectively known as the hind brain okay now this as i said that the fourth ventricle above it continues with the cerebral aqueduct okay with the third ventricle and below this fourth ventricle communicate with this close part of the medulla which is the lower part of the medulla where there is the beginning of the central canal and this central canal of the close part of the medulla will continue lower down with the central canal of the spinal cord so this is that site where it is the beginning of the central canal is here in the close part of the medulla okay now if you see the fourth ventricle it lies in front of the cerebellum as i said that in this cross section you can easily see that this is the fourth ventricle which lies in front of the cerebellum and behind the pons and the upper part of the medulla behind this pons and the upper part of the medulla now if you see the roof the cerebellum forms the roof of the fourth ventricle in anatomical position this is not actually roof it is the posterior wall and the floor of the fourth ventricle which is formed by the pons and the upper medulla is actually the anterior wall in anatomy but we will call this uh, as a floor and this the one which is formed by the cerebellum posteriorly we will call it as a roof so this is the roof of the cerebe a uh, roof of the fourth ventricle and this is the floor of the fourth ventricle formed by the pons in the upper medulla now if you see the detail of this fourth ventricle okay this fourth ventricle consists of a floor as i just said and a roof it is and the lateral walls and the lateral wall so let us come first on the floor which is formed by the posterior surface of the pons and the open part of the medulla that is the floor so first we will deal with the floor if we see the uh, floor okay the uh, it is diamond shaped and hence sometime it is called as rhomboid fossa in the specimen i will show you this diamond shaped floor first okay for this purpose i have removed the cerebellum from behind okay so the roof is gone here and what you are seeing is just see this this is the posterior surface of the pons and this is the open part of the medulla where my tip of my brush is there this is the open part of the medulla and this is the close part of the medulla and this is the 
pawns. Above this, if you are able to see, then this is the uh, midbrain, the posterior surface of the midbrain is seen here, and this is formed by the, at least you must be seeing the inferior colliculi, okay, two inferior colliculi, which forms the posterior part of the medulla. So after this orientation, you can see this is small area, and this small area is the floor of the fourth ventricle, okay, floor ventricle. Now this floor of the fourth ventricle is, uh, I mean, say, uh, divided into upper and lower part, okay, this is divided by the, I mean, say, bundles of transversely running fibers. Now, if you can see here, let me have it some more lights, uh, this is the can you see these ridges here? These are transversely running fibers in the floor. If you can zoom it in your, I mean, say, laptop or the mobile, okay, and see these transversely running fibers, and these transversely running fibers, they are called as stria medullaris. They are called as stria. So on right side and left side, okay, there are stria medullaris fibers. They are running laterally and they divide the floor of the fourth ventricle in upper part and in the lower part. So above stria is the upper part of the floor and below stria is the lower part of the floor, okay, of this rhomboid fossa. Okay, you will see that the the, this upper part is uh, formed by that of the posterior surface of pons, while that of the lower part is formed by the medulla, that is by the close part, uh, sorry, by the open part of the medulla, okay. So the lower part, that means part which is lying below that of the stria is the part of the medulla and part which is lying above this stria is the posterior surface of the pons, it is the pons, okay. Now, this groove you must be seeing here, see this median groove, okay. You are seeing this median groove, it is called as the median sulcus. And since it is present in the midline, this part is called as the median sulcus because it is exactly present in the median plane and it divides the floor of the fourth ventricle into right and the left half. It divides into the right and the left half. Now on either side of this median sulcus, okay, on either side there is an another sulcus, okay, another sulcus on the, uh, this median and that sulcus is much laterally here and that is called as the sulcus limitans, sulcus limitans. So, between the median sulcus and sulcus limitans on right as well as on to the, which is a shallow sulcus, not as deep as the median sulcus, okay, which is called as the sulcus limitans, okay. Now, there is a presence of a raised area that is called as the median eminence on either side, okay, on either side of the median eminence, okay. This is called as the median eminence. Now this median eminence I don't think is a correct name because there is nothing like midline structure. The median eminence should be either called as the medial eminence because they lie on either side of the median sulcus. Okay, median sulcus. So anyway, we will also call it as the median eminence. Okay. Now, lateral to this median eminence, I said there is a faint groove like uh, on either side that is called as the sulcus limitans, okay? This is called as the sulcus. Now, it's still lateral to the sulcus limitans where I am putting the, my brush, okay? This both in the uh, posterior surface of pons and the posterior surface of the upper part of the medulla, this lateral uh, which is I mean say lateral to the sulcus limitans, this part, this part. 
This is called as the vestibular area. And why it is called as the vestibular area? Because deep to this vestibular area, which is extending in a large area from pons to the medulla, that means covering to the pons as well as in the medulla, deep to this vestibular area lies the vestibular nuclear complexes. There are four nuclei in the vestibular nucleus, superior, inferior, medial and lateral, and all these nuclei they are lying deep to this vestibular area okay so I hope that very roughly you have understood though may have not seen everything correctly which I will go in detail but at this stage I will will try to show you in a drawing so that you can better understood this okay so I will bring a drawing here see this is I have very roughly drawn this is the floor of the fourth ventricle, okay? This is the floor. And here you can see that from here, this part, this is the stria medullaris. See this transversely running uh, fibers, which in our floor we have seen as a ridge, okay? Coming from the median sulcus, okay? And going laterally, going laterally. And they divide it in upper part, which is the posterior surface of pons and a inferior part which is the posterior surface of the upper part of the medulla okay below this is the uh, close part of the medulla but this is the rhomboid sap floor of the fourth ventricle and in exactly in midline as i said that this is called as the median eminence okay this is called as median eminence this is median eminence and just lateral to this there is a fend sulcus which is called as sulcus limitans okay limitans just sulcus limitans okay and then whatsoever part lies lateral to the sulcus limitans extending in the pons this part is of pons and this is of medulla so from here to here this large area okay is the vestibular area it is called as vestibular area so this is the vestibular area okay now this ridge on either side of the median eminence is called as the medial i mean say median sulcus not median eminence here it was the median sulcus okay the midline line is the median sulcus okay and this ridge on to the either side elevated ridge is called as the median eminence this is known as median eminence so median sulcus in midline and on either side it is the median eminence okay let us go still further okay the structure which we can see and then i will show you the in the specimen so i am going to the upper part that is the posterior surface of the pons which forms the upper part of the floor of the fourth ventricle okay immediately above the stria medullaris see this stria medullaris on either side of the median eminence there is a slight swelling and this is known as facial colliculus. See this rounded slight swelling and I will show you in a specimen. This is called as the facial colliculus. Okay. Facial colliculus. Facial. Okay. Why it is called as the facial colliculus? Because this median eminence. Okay. Here lies deep to it a nucleus called as the abducent right and left okay on either side of the median sulcus okay in the median eminence itself this is a uh, bulging here okay just above stria medullaris and this is facial colliculus okay and it is produced due to the fibers of the facial now winding round onto the surface of the posterior surface of the abducent non nucleus the sixth cranial non nucleus that's why it is called as the facial colliculus okay at the upper level of the facial colliculus there is a triangular depression see this depression okay upper level here there is a triangular depression you will be seeing okay and this is called as the superior fovea okay this will be called as superior fovea here 
you can call it here okay this will be the superior fovea fovea means depression here will be the depression will be seen that is called as the superior fovea and just above the superior fovea okay the sulcus limitans and in an area which is blue in color see this sulcus limitans on this side as well as on this side and this is ending in an area sulcus which is just above the superior fovea which is blue in color okay this sulcus is i mean say this area is blue in color and it is called as the locus ceruleus this area which is blue in color is called as locus ceruleus let me write this spelling c o e r u l e u s locus ceruleus okay now this bluish coloration which is present here is due to the melanin pigment see the, see the whole floor and every ventricular surface is covered by ependyma so this bluish coloration is seen deep to the ependyma present deep to the ependyma and this is because of the presence of the melanin pigment which are present in the nucleus ceruleus and this is due to the deposition of in the cytoplasm of the neurons which are present here and this neuron they secrete non adrenergic uh, substance so they are called as the nor adrenergic neurons in the cytoplasm of which there is a melanin pigment and that's why it looks area looks blue deep to the ependymal covering okay and ependyma is nothing but the epithelial lining of the Uh, ventricle okay of the ventricle so mm, and still lateral you we have seen that this will be the vestibular area lateral to that of the facial colliculus and sulcus limitans okay sulcus limitans so these are the structures which are present in the floor of the fourth ventricle in the upper part that means above the stria medullaris let us see the structures which are present hmm, inferior to the stria medullaris which i said this lower part of this floor of the fourth ventricle correspond to the posterior surface of the medulla oblongata okay and here if you trace this sulcus i mean say medial eminence and sulcus uh, the uh, median sulcus it will continue here so the median sulcus is continuing here and then you will see the sulcus limitans if you will see it will form the lateral boundary of a triangle see this triangle it is on to the left side as well as on to the right side this triangle elongated triangle and this is called as the hypoglossal triangle and why it is called as hypoglossal triangle because here there is the deep to it is the presence of the hypoglossal nucleus that is the nucleus of the 12th cranial nerve and just lateral to this hypoglossal nucleus whose apex is directed downward there is an another small triangle whose apex is in opposite direction that means it is directed upward and this triangle which lies lateral to the hypoglossal triangle is called as the vagal triangle and this vagal triangle is because the deep to it lies the vagus nerve that is the 10th cranial nerve nucleus of the dorsal nucleus of vagus the 10th cranial nerve and also at the same time there is an another nucleus lying in this area triangle that is called as the nucleus of the tractus solitarius okay or the nucleus of solitary tract so this is the vagal triangle for vagus nuclei and this is the hypoglossal triangle for the hypoglossal nucleus and still lateral to this this area we already know that hmm, a large area is for the vestibular area okay for vestibular nuclei but see the apex of the vagal triangle and at the apex of the vagal triangle you will see an another pit or a depression and here it was called as the superior fovea here this is called as the inferior fovea okay so inferior fovea is a depression which lies at the apex of the vagal triangle in the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle okay so 
this is i mean so the structures are same on right side as well as on left side of the median sulcus of the median sulcus okay let us see the boundary of this sulcus okay i mean say the floor of this fourth ventricle not the sulcus but the floor of the ventricle now here is the upper margin of the floor here will be we will see that it is here bounded at on posterior aspect by the superior medullary vellum vellum on either side the upper half of the floor is bounded by the superior cerebellar peduncle superior cerebellar peduncle similarly in lower half it is bounded in upper part by that of the inferior cerebellar peduncle and lower down by the gracile and cuneate tubercle which i will show you in the diagram so this is the lower half which is bounded laterally okay as we have already learned that above it communicates with the cerebral aqueduct and below here it communicates with the central canal of the close part of the medulla which will continue with that of the spinal cord now this lateral angles they will uh, are continuing with that of the lateral recess through which the cerebrospinal fluid will go into the subarachnoid space so will be also and foramina in the posterior roof which i will show you just now will also continue here so this complete the uh, i mean to say flow let us go to the roof okay let us go to the roof and i will show you the roof okay let me show you i think first from that of the book okay and then i will go to the actual specimen because it is a very small area and very difficult to see but uh, here from the photograph itself i will try to show you see this this is the uh, brain stem from the posterior aspect we are seeing the brain stem from the posterior again this is the same book neuroanatomy okay for medical student written by me and published by the walters and kluver and as usual i am thankful to them okay right see here the posterior surface okay this is the brain stem and we are seeing the brain stem from posterior aspect from where okay the cerebellum was removed that is here is the superior cerebellar peduncle cut here is the inferior cerebellar peduncle cut and this is the middle cerebellar peduncle same is on this side also and here it is the superior medullary vellum inferior and superior colliculi of the midbrain are there that means below this is the part of the pons and here is the close part of the medulla and this is the open part of the medulla and the posterior surface of the pons you can see here the stria medullaris this band okay this ridges which you are seeing is the stria medullaris which is dividing the floor in upper part and the lower part this is the facial colliculus okay this swelling this is the sulcus okay median sulcus and sulcus limitans will be still lateral which you may not be able to see very properly because this is such a small area yes some of this sulcus limitans is seen here this large area extending in pons and medulla this is called as the vestibular area now you can see here okay if the camera is focusing properly you can see here let just wait for it to focus here it can see be seen a triangular below the sulcus i mean say below the stria medullaris this whose apex is directed downward this is a triangle called as the hypoglossal triangle and there is an another small triangle seen here and whose apex lying here okay upward and this is the vagal triangle so this will be superior fovea okay it will be superior fovea i will try to show you all this thing in the floor okay but since the light adjustment may not be so efficient here i may not be able to show you the complete thing though i have dissected the cerebellum and taken it out okay taken it out cutting those three peduncle by which it was attached to that of the uh, brain stem this was this is the cut portion of the superior cerebellar peduncle okay this here is the 
large middle cerebellar peduncle and inferiorly this was the inferior cerebellar peduncle going here and this was cut here in this area okay so this is that inferior cerebellar peduncle is here which was cut from this area so all three peduncles middle inferior and superior are cut on this side as well as on this side to remove the cerebellum and let us see the orientation of this i have shown you that hmm, these are the two inferior uh, colliculus okay are colliculi okay right and left colliculi which are the present on the posterior aspect of the midbrain and here you are seeing a fold of the white matter see this okay i am just passing my brush deep to it and this is extending between the two superior cerebellar peduncle this is cerebellar peduncle of the left side and this is the superior cerebellar peduncle of the right side and in between two this fold of the white matter which is extending is nothing but the superior medullary velum so this is the superior medullary velum is here okay which is the part of the roof of the fourth ventricle okay i will come to that hmm. this is bounded by the upper uh, the floor is bounded above by superior cerebellar peduncle and then this is the stria medullary see this ridges going slightly upward obliquely upward so these are the stria medullary see this stria on this coming from the sulcus okay median sulcus and then going laterally towards the lateral ridges okay and then on either side of this median sulcus you can see this is the raised area which is called as the median eminence or medial eminence median eminence on right side and left side and then on this lateral to it this is the depression which is seen here it is the sulcus limitans okay where my brush is there this is and these two swellings which are seen here in the median eminence okay just above the stria medullaris these two swelling they are the facial colliculi they are the right and left colliculus okay these are the facial colliculi here and then you can see a area this is the superior fovea is here and in the superior fovea you can see the locus ceruleus because of the change in the color okay if you can appreciate the change okay on the tip of my brush i will show you that this is that depression which is the superior fovea and just above it here is the hmm, locus ceruleus if you can see it's good okay then we go to the lower part and in the lower part it will be real difficult to show you the two triangles the hypoglossal and the vagal triangle let it focus yes so here in the either side of the median eminence i mean the median sulcus this triangle where my tip is of the brush is there this is the hypoglossal triangle and just lateral to this 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 is the vagal triangle okay and the rest of the area is the vestibular area and now this is the opening of the central canal of the close part of the medulla this is medulla and this is the close part and this is the open part and from this lower angle this is the central canal will be continuing here and through which the csf will go in lower down so these are two lateral recesses and this is the central canal i hope that i am not able to show you more than more clear than this okay more clear because area is very small because the area is very small but i will try to show you from floor from this specimen which is the hemisection and i think this is a better specimen to show you okay now just see here the floor which i am showing you okay trying to show you this floor half of the floor i am trying to show you and just let me put it uh, this depression which you are seeing where my forceps is i mean say not brush is going and this depression let me have in this way yes this median sulcus okay you can see very well because it is an unequal section so here it the whole median section is seen and i am passing the bristle of my 
tip of my this brush inside the opening of the central canal. See this? This is trying to go inside the opening of the, yes, it is going inside the opening of the central canal. Right. And then just lateral to this median sulcus here, you can see here the facial colliculus. Can you see this facial colliculus? Stria medullaris is just below it. And then what I am trying to show you, the hypoglossal and vagal triangle. Yes, you are able to see now. This is the hypoglossal triangle. See this, this hypoglossal triangle. This one, this is going down, whose apex is here, whose apex is here. See, this is the hypoglossal triangle. And just above, very small, this is the vagal triangle, whose apex is here in the depression. And this depression where apex is there, itself is the, this is the fovea, inferior fovea is here. And the lateral most area is nothing but the vestibular area. I think I have tried hard to show you the floor of the fourth ventricle. Now this is the time to come to the you know, lateral ventricle. Okay, so we will come to now the, I mean say, in the, not lateral ventricle, I am see the roof of the fourth ventricle. So I will teach you now the roof of the fourth ventricle. And roof here can be very well seen in this section. Okay, in this section. That is the mid sagittal section, you can see the roof. And let me just put it here. You can see the roof here. See this, it is the mesagital section and this was the inferior uh, colliculus. You can see this posterior aspect, superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus and just below the inferior colliculus it is the beginning of the superior medullary vellum which I said that it is stretches between the two superior cerebellar peduncle. So this white matter fold, okay, or lamina which is going downward, it is the roof right up to the cerebellum and this is going inside in the median recess of the cerebellum here, deep inside the vermis of the cerebellum this is going. So this superior medullary vellum is the roof in the upper part, okay, it is the roof. So the upper part of the roof is formed on each side by the superior cerebellar peduncle. The interval between this peduncle is bridged by this thin sheet of the white matter which is called as the superior medullary vellum. So this is superior medullary vellum is here, okay, superior, which is the upper part of the uh, roof, okay. Let us go to the lower part of the roof. Now this is the lower part of the roof and in the lower part the roof is formed by the similar white matter, now I mean to say lamina which is called as inferior medullary vellum, okay? And in the remaining part, it will be formed by the fold of the dura and ependyma called as the telachoridea. I will just show you by the um, diagram. It is difficult to show. Uh, see the inferior medullary vellum. I will try to just pull this, okay? And will try to show you the extent of the superior medullary vellum and that of the inferior medullary vellum. You can see the superior medullary vellum is going deep inside the cerebellum, okay, as a recess here which is extending posteriorly and that white lamina which is present here, okay, which is present here. This is the inferior medullary vellum which is partly seen. But better before I show you the inferior medullary vellum, let me explain you with the help of the diagram how the roof is found. Okay, again the book. Hmm? Now this is that superior medullary vellum which is formed by the white lamina covered by this green color thing is nothing but the ependyma, okay, which is an epithelial lining and then this is that uh, white matter or continuous with the white matter of cerebellum forming a recess going deep inside the cerebellum. So this is the cerebellum and this is the roof, okay, upper part of the roof. Let us see the lower part of the roof, okay. Hmm? Now here, this is exactly in the similar way, the lamina of the uh, white matter which is covered by the ependyma on its inner aspect and on its outer aspect, this red line indicate that it is pia matter. And so it is the ependyma, white matter, and that of the uh, 
pia mater. Okay, so this forms the hmm, inferior medullary velum. But inferior medullary velum is not as long as that of superior. It is very small, and then it ends here. That means white lamina ends here, and then the ependyma and this pia mater they come close to each other and forms a membranous part of the roof in the lower part. Okay, and this is just the membrane formed by the ependyma and then of the pia mater which is called a stella choroidea. When the two things that is pia mater and ependyma they come close to each other it is called as the tela choroidea. And deep to this lies this uh, choroid plexus okay choroid which secretes the CSF okay which secretes the CSF through this tela choroidea into the cavity okay. And then the lower margin here it is there is a foramina called as foramina of mesinda in the midline okay in median plane through which the CSF goes into the subarachnoid uh, space cerebromedullary cistern here and then this is the close part of the medulla the beginning of the central canal in the medulla close. So from here to here was the open part and here is the close part of the medulla here will lie the floor okay which we have just learned this is the site where the floor is lying so this is that rhomboidal cavity called as the fourth ventricle i hope theoretically you have understood the lower part of the roof i will try to show you the inferior medullary velum which is very deeply situated the membranous part of this has already broken okay which is very delicate so i will not be able to show you that hmm, uh, telacoridea but I will try to show you the just pulling this part yes can you see this part I am pulling and here this is that let me put my forcep here this small part here this part can you see this part yes this part this is the inferior med white lamina this is superior medullary vellum and this part is the inferior medullary vellum okay and the margin from this inferior medullary vellum which is the lamina white matter uh, lamina here will come the membranous it will become the membranous structure which is broken okay very delicate here so this is the roof in upper part superior medullary vellum in inferior part deeply situated is the inferior medullary vellum and the tela choroidea which is the fold of the membrane okay and here in the midline will be the aperture the foramina mesendis okay that is the roof okay this is about the roof of the fourth ventricle let us come to an another aspect of the fourth ventricle that the whole of the fourth ventricle is lined by that of the it is lined by the ependyma and contain the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle let me show you the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle which is near the lower part of the roof can you see this just a minute can you see this tuft of the capillaries here see this hmm? Hmm, bunch okay very delicate huh? structure here this is the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle which goes through the lateral recess okay and the ependyma i told you that telachoroidea just being pushed here inside to form the uh, this choroid plexus in this diagram i have shown you that there was this is the telachoroidea membranous structure and this was the choroid plexus and this will form the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle will be here okay it is the length. now let us see the we have seen the roof we have seen the floor and i have told you the lateral boundary but now i will show you the lateral boundary with the help of the diagram okay how it is bounded above and how this it is bounded below okay bounded below let me show you with this diagram i hope i will be able to show you Okay, now this is the lateral boundary. Above it is bounded by the two superior cerebellar peduncle which are bridged by the superior medullary vellum. Okay, and then 
it will go right up to the junction of the medulla and pons here roof will go like that and then here in the lower part this is bounded by most posteriorly by the gracile tubercle then the cuneate tubercle and then by the mm, right and left inferior cerebellar peduncle okay so this is the lower lateral boundary and superior uh, the cerebellar peduncle they are the superior boundary okay and then here is the lateral recess through which the csf can drain into that subarachnoid space okay it can drain into the subarachnoid space so this was the lateral wall okay lateral wall and thus how many openings are there there are three openings in the roof one is the foramina mesenda mesendi yes which i am showing here with the brush this is the midline opening and the two openings were on the lat as a lateral recess through which the csf will come now into the subarachnoid space of the brain and will circulate all around the brain okay it will circulate all around the brain and then i think this diagram may give you a some idea about the roof this is the inferior and superior colliculus means this is the midbrain this is the superior medullary velum which forms the upper half of the roof and this is the inferior medullary velum okay then this becomes a membranous structure okay and this is ependyma and pia mater deep to which will lie the uh, i mean to say choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle and this is the median aperture foramina of mesendi okay this and this is the Um, i mean say color or uh, which indicate that it is covered by the ependyma this is the floor okay the posterior surface of pons and the upper half of the medulla i hope that this must have given you some idea about the uh, fourth ventricle read from your books again okay read it again and then it will give you a fairly good idea about the fourth ventricle thank you very much for watching this video